uh, welcome to the Global Hello. Forum on Democratizing Work. Um, we're really uh, excited today to be speaking to Jean-Pascal von Ypresel, uh, who's a professor of environmental science uh, at the Université Catholique de Levant. Uh, vice chair, has served as vice chair of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, um, has served as a lead author um, for uh, multiple assessment reports of the IPCC um, and has uh, been involved in, in um, supporting the IPCC over many, many years, is, is really an expert in this world, um, has received many, um, has, has received many deserved awards uh, and prizes for this work. Um, and, uh, you know, it's really, it's really wonderful to have, to have you here today. Um, I'm Melissa Battistoni. I'm a professor of political science at Barnard College, um, and I'm uh, just going to speaking uh, to you, Jean Pascal, about um, the, the Democratizing Work Manifesto and how we can um, connect that to uh, questions around climate change and decarbonization. So I wanted to just start off uh, by um, by asking you um, a really basic question, which is just. Um, which aspect of the decarbonizing work manifesto um, resonates mo most with the work that you have done um, and, and your areas of interest. And, and if you can say um, more about what exactly that is and, and how the democratizing work manifesto resonates for you. Well, I think re resonating is, is the right expression because I am not, uh, as you mentioned, a specialist in either the, um, uh, political aspects of um, uh, of, of work, uh, the um, uh, legislation around work, etc. But um, uh, I have um, uh, the, the the feeling that indeed one of the reasons uh, why uh, the environment uh, is so often uh, neglected uh, in economic decisions. Um, and many of those economic decisions are taken uh, by businesses um, comes from the fact that um, the, uh, the people uh, working in those uh, companies, in those businesses, uh, do not have enough uh, of a say uh, in the decisions uh, made um, about the future of those uh, companies. Uh, very often, um, that's my feeling, but not my expertise. So I'm very clear on the limits on, on, on of what I say. Uh, I, I have the impression uh, that, um, um, but it also comes from encountering uh, many people uh, during my career, that uh, if um, the views of um, uh, workers uh, in some of, those big companies who have um, sometimes a very big impact on the environment uh, were but better listened to, uh, well, <laughs> things would be better, not only for those workers, because very often uh, the decisions taken uh, by the um, um, top level in those companies uh, do not take into account enough uh, the, uh, the need to protect the health, uh, for example, uh, or the well-being uh, more broadly of those workers. But very often th there is a, a match between, you know, concern for, for the health of um, the workers in a company and the health of, 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 the, um, of the environment, of the planet. And if uh, a better connection could be made between... Um, uh, the concern for the health of workers uh, broadly, the well-being of workers broadly, uh, and uh, the orientation given by those companies um, um, in such a way that the impact um, of those companies on the environment uh, would be um, lowered, uh, well, you know, many things would be better for, for everybody, actually. So I really think that... Um, a higher level of democracy in uh, in in businesses and companies uh, would would help uh, the fight for a cleaner environment, which is really needed for everyone, not only for the workers but also for all the inhabitants of this small planet. Thank you. I um, that was a great um, 
response and I really agree completely um, with everything you've said. And so I'm, I'm curious if um, what you think the challenge is to realizing that, to, to giving workers more, um, more of a say in uh, how firms are run, more um, control over you know, whether they, the, the, con the conditions of their work and all of the things that you mentioned, what do you see as the major challenges um, to that? Well, you know, one of the main challenges in, in, um, in, in, in uh, the environments, uh, around the environment, is the short-termism of, of so many decisions taken um, about it. Uh, it's short-termism at the political level, it's short-termism um, in decisions taken um, at the business level. And... Um, I've maybe it's the naivety <laughs> to think that uh, if um, um, the um, the workers could be um, better listened to, um, that uh, some of those short termism uh, would um, not be accepted anymore. You know the uh, the, the the power of. Um, lobbies um, very often uh, emanating from uh, either business themselves businesses themselves or federation of uh, companies uh, the lobbying to um, influence uh, political uh, legislation uh, around for example uh, the environment um, is very strong and has a very a strong influence very often, I must say, negative on the kind of decisions that are taken and, and which, are, um, which have a lot of bad consequences for um, the way uh, business treats uh, the environment. And I have um, the naivety to, uh, to think that um, if um, the workers in those companies would be better listened to, that um, it would be less so uh, because um, very often uh, those uh, workers understand uh, the, um, the need to, to have a, a better coherence between um, what's good for, for them, um, for their health, for their well-being uh, and uh, what would be good for um, the rest of the world uh, outside the companies and um, so one of the big obstacles, uh, this short-termism, this, um, th this lobbying work, which is often lobbying uh, for in, in the pure interest of the um, uh, short-term interest of the, uh, of the companies, uh, all of that would be improved, I think, with, with um, better um, democracy in, 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 in companies. Well, if that makes you naive to think, then I, I'm naive too, because I do think uh, that that would help a lot. And I, I hope that we're not naive to believe that. Um, and, you know, I think that is really one of the things we want um, to, to be talking about with, the, with democratizing work. So, um, so thank you. Um, so I know a lot of, um, you know, your work is you, you're also very involved with um, people who are working on these issues sort of on the ground and in concrete ways. And so, uh, you know, just today you mentioned you were um, visiting communities that have been hit by flooding in Belgium. And so um, I'm curious if, if from that perspective, you have thoughts on some concrete opportunities for taking, um, for taking steps to, um, to further the principles of um, democratizing work and decommodifying work um, and, uh, and decarbonizing our economy if um, what sort of concretely uh, we could start with. Yes, you, you know, thank you for, for this question. You know, today I indeed had the opportunity to, um, to, to, to visit uh, the area east of Belgium uh, that was affected last July by terrible floods uh, coming from, uh, mostly coming from uh, extreme precipitation that is essentially due to, to climate change or at least strongly intensified by climate change. And um, uh, what was striking is that um, uh, the um, is 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 was the connection between uh, you know inequalities uh, in in um, um, the way people live uh, the, the place people live many uh, very often it was um, uh, it's poorer people living close to the river. 
and and richer people living high up, higher up, and not uh, not being affected as much um, by the the same floods. And it's it's a constant. Um, it, it's it's something that's quite common uh, in the uh, when 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 people look at impacts of of climate change. But it's the same for other kinds of uh, environmental effects like air pollution for example or soil pollution uh, and that is that the um uh, the um uh, social justice uh, issues um have a very strong connection uh, with the severity of the impacts uh, for example of climate change and it was striking today so what would be the connection with with um, democratizing work? Um, well, I'm not an expert in 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 work issue, as I said, but but still, um, the, the social issues that are uh, that were striking for me today, uh, showing that the um, the climate injustice and and the um, the social injustice uh, were so um, closely connected, uh, probably have a lot on, in common. Uh, with um, the um, uh, the issues um, you were working on uh, around the, um, uh, the the lack of democracy in in um, in so many companies, because if those people um, we listened to uh, today uh, and which were who were so happy uh, to see uh, that. Um, um, the climate experts and uh, others were, were, were visiting them and listening um, uh, to them uh, were better listened to um, in general. Um, well, many things uh, would be improved. I mean, they were, you know, uh, very um, uh, eager to, um, uh, to be um, listened to better by policy makers, for example, who have done um, very little actually on the ground in those flooded areas. And, you know, it's probably very similar to, to, um, uh, to the lack of um, um, democracy in, in companies. I mean, so many, um, in so many companies, uh, there are problems, uh, whether technical problems or social problems or environmental problems um, that would benefit from the uh, ideas, from the suggestions, uh, from the uh, voices uh, of uh, the workers were very, so often close to the, uh, uh, to the problems to solve. Um, that I think there are many similarities with, with what, between what um, I, I saw today uh, on the ground in those flooded areas and which was very moving because you know some people we met had lost relatives and um, we heard terrible stories we saw uh, destructions uh, similar to a post-war um, situation it was really um, uh, striking and uh, yeah I think there are quite quite a few similarities with, the, with those um, situations and 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 the lack of democracy in many companies. Yeah, everything you've just said really resonates with me. I think um, one of the um, experiences that really got me interested in climate change and climate politics was um, spending time in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina back in 2005. And um, so much of what you said applies there too with um, you know, poor neighborhoods, um, African-American neighborhoods being um, the most seriously affected um, places where people probably had less voice in um, maybe not necessarily the workplace, but in, in government um, the, and just the, the connection of social issues to, um, to uh, the questions of, of natural disasters, which are um, intensifying uh, with climate change. And, and if I may, I, I think another area where um, um, a much better um, um, democracy in companies would be useful as far as the environment is concerned is, is chemical companies. I mean, look at, mm -hmm. look at Bhopal, for example, uh, in 1984 in India. Uh, um, 
and and look at the way the workers there were were, were totally ignored um, uh, even though uh, they after the catastrophe even though they they had um, experienced terrible effects of the the chemicals released uh, during the, um, the the chemical um, accident there and uh, i'm convinced uh, that uh, if um, uh, well, first of all, that those workers should have been um, treated much better um, uh, after uh, that, that accident uh, by the, um, the company involved. I think it was Dupont, if I remember well. Um, and uh, also that uh, in, in, uh, in the area of prevention of, of that kind of terrible chemical accident, which um, affected the lives of thousands of people, um uh, the um if if the um concerns and um uh, ideas suggestions uh, uh, of 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 the workers uh, and the local uh, scientists as well had been uh, listened to better uh, well that kind of things would um, happen much less and maybe would not have happened uh, in the beginning and, and in the area of chemical pollution, you can, I mean, look at um, uh, pollution by uh, PFAS and, um, and there are examples in the US, examples in Belgium, there are examples everywhere, uh, or, or the effect of the pollution by oil products in, um, in, in Nigeria, by um, oil companies. I mean, there are so many examples uh, where the concerns of the local workers uh, have been ignored and the result of that has been effects, terrible effects, uh, not only on the local workers, but on the um, population around uh, and on the environment. Uh, so indeed, um, those issues are very much connected. Yes, absolutely. And I, I really appreciate you bringing in those other examples and, and connecting um, uh, democratic control of workers or, or the voice of workers to the, the, um, to the broader community. Cause I think you're absolutely right that, um, those, uh, you know, those effects that, that maybe workers are facing within, um, the factory or the chemical plant, um, also have repercussions for people beyond them. So, um, I think that's a really important connection to be drawing, um, uh, with, with respect to just the question of um, how democratizing work connects to other questions of um, social justice and democratization um, more broadly. Um, so I um, am curious if you have any, if there are other thoughts you'd like to share with the, the participants of the Global Forum um, as we're to sort of conclude our interview. Um, maybe if there's something that you want to, to say that's um, to, uh, that might be an encouragement to the public as how we might imagine uh, democratizing work or things that you think we really need to keep in mind as we as we set out and um, try to bring these questions of um, democratizing work and, and climate change more closely together. Well, you know, the, the, in a sense, the good news is that there are plenty of opportunities in the coming few months to um, put those issues um, uh, on, on, on top of the, the agenda. There is the Glasgow COP26 in a few weeks. These, uh, there are regular um, discussions at the level of the UN uh, about the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. I mean, that's the pin I'm wearing, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, which are so important to implement together in a holistic uh, and integrated way. Um, because I think we really have no, no choice. Uh, we have to keep uh, this small planet um, inhabitable for everybody. Um, there is no other inhabitable planet uh, in the solar system. Uh, and um, as long as um, the uh, more democracy has not been uh, implemented uh, in all uh, companies and business of the world, um, the voice of those who don't have a voice uh, need to be um, uh, listened to and uh, reflected uh, by those who can uh, speak. And probably uh, those who participate to uh, your global forum can speak and can be uh, listened to. And uh, all 
uh, of you, you have a responsibility then to um, relay uh, and be the voice of those who don't have yet uh, the opportunity to speak and be heard. So I think your work is, is very important, um, but ultimately uh, what would be good is that everybody uh, could be listened to. Absolutely. And I, I think that's a great note to end on that um, we, you know, what we're doing here, I think it's important to be talking about these issues, but the ultimate goal is, is to really achieve that um, um, democratization that everyone has an equal voice. Um, and it's, it's a long way to go, uh, certainly in the world of work and in, in the world of climate change uh, and, and climate politics, but I think um, I appreciate your, your charge to all of us to carry up that work wherever we are. Um, so, uh, unless you have any other concluding thoughts, anything else you'd like to share? I think we have covered it, isn't it? <laughs> okay, fantastic. Well, thank you so much again, uh, Jean-Pascal von Uppersell. Thank you for your time. It's been really wonderful speaking Welcome. with you. And um, I hope uh, everyone watching will continue to, um, that you'll they'll come to some of the democratizing work. Uh, panels. We hope to be in conversation with you there. So thank you so much. With pleasure. Thank you very much also.